Well, hello there, friends. This is Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I bring you the next in the 24 Tags of Christmas series for 2015. We're on day five. Each day this week, I have been sharing four tags a day, different variations on the same tag in each day. So there's 24 altogether. There is a giveaway on my blog. You're welcome to click on the link in the description down below to get more information on how you might win. <laughs> All right, let's get started on today's project. I'm going to be using Prismacolor pencils today. This is the storage I use for them. I'll have a link for you in the description and on my blog for the pencil case. And uh, lots of people ask me about that. My technique, I'm going to show you real quickly in this initial section um, with a slow piece, and then we're going to speed it up. I'll link you to another video in the description down below if you want to see more of my technique. But I keep a really super sharp pencil and I use a very light touch. So I have a gray color I'm using first for this polar bear. And the gray color is going to be in, not in the darkest areas, but it's going to be like the mid-tone because I want this polar bear to look white. So I'm just putting a super light coat. I'm going different directions and I'm trying to fill in all those little spots where the paper texture is and to just make it look really smooth by doing that. It's something that takes a lot of patience. Cards like this take a while for me. I almost did color pencil for the entire background too, and I decided not to, so please don't worry that this is gonna take forever, but I am gonna show you four different ways to color this bear because the little girl's gonna stay the same in all of them, but I, the variation will be on different ways to approach the bear. So I'm using my gray still, just gonna add lots of layers to him all over his whole little body. The lighting is basically going to be from the center uh, for the most part, so I'll put a little shading on the right and the left and just keep working it. It's one of those things that takes a little bit of extra effort, but boy does it have an effect when you finish a card or a tag or an image. I think colored pencil has a very unique look that people recognize as art right away. There's no mistaking it for any kind of other fancy technique. I'm adding more shading in his belly because his belly will be receded and there's shading underneath of his scarf a little bit for right now. I'll be adding more to it and underneath of his arm because those are shaded by the light that's coming from above. And a little bit more over there on the tummy, a little bit behind the little girl because she's going to cast a shadow on the little bear. I'll use something on some of the shadows on the arm. I even left an underside highlight underneath that shadow that you can see there there's just a little bit of bounced light which tends to add a little bit of interest to an image so I'm going to do the same thing down here on his underside like on the underside of the feet there so you'll start to see that develop as this uh, image gets colored so I'm just smoothing out that color layer 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 just keeps happening that's <laughs> just that's just the way my pencil rolls and now I'm gonna go in with a little bit of a darker color and I'm just adding deeper shadows underneath each one of those areas where I already said there were shadows. You can see they're just getting a little harsher, a little stronger. And if you use really light layers, you have a lot of flexibility to change things up. You can take a kneaded eraser and press it over an area. I wouldn't rub, but press it into an area and you can really lighten color up. If you start getting very waxy, when you get a waxy buildup, there's really not any recovering from that. So you wanna keep your layers as light as possible if you're gonna use this technique. There are plenty of techniques showing how to, how to do it with a waxy buildup. There are some people that rely on that as their technique, but for me, that's not something that works all that well. So you need to find out what works for you. I was debating about her hand, whether or not that was a mitten or her hand. I'll make a decision later. <laughs> it's one of those things that happens as you start working on something. You can see I'm building up layers with a darker peach color and purple for her skin. And now I'm gonna use some white, uh, some, some blue to create the white for her hat. And she's gonna be colored the same across all these, so you won't have to watch her being colored repeatedly, but I'm just gonna try to make her light blue color as even as possible across her whole little outfit, her little jacket, and I'll add shading to it with a different color. But I'm constantly, as I work in colored pencil, stopping to sharpen my pencil. I've been looking for a long time and announced recently, I finally found one, 
a pencil sharpener that I really do love. The Panasonic that I had for just decades, I had it since college, uh, still works great, but I couldn't find a place to send anybody to to go get one. So I did a lot of research and in the uh, pencil video that I'm linking you to in the description down below, I will share with you um, in that video more detail of the pencil sharpener, but it is a, a bow stitch. I was looking for something in particular that had an auto stop. A lot of them have something called a pencil stop and it's not the same as an auto stop. I didn't know that until I kept buying pencil sharpener after pencil sharpener after pencil sharpener, but I can definitely tell you I'm happy with this one. It works very well. It is giant. Just give you a warning. If you don't have much space, it won't be really good for you, but there are some nice small hand crank ones that work well as well. And I took a knife and I was able to scratch out a little color there because I had gone back and forth about what color that was going to be. And I wanted to make it flesh colored. So with, I, I always keep my little knife with me when I'm doing my pencil work, that little finger knife, because if there's an area where I suddenly get one little flake of really dark color, and I don't wanna make the entire image dark in order to blend it in, I can, if I'm going really lightly, I can take that knife and just flick that one little piece and remove one little dark spot. And it sometimes saves my bacon in trying to get some colors to blend. So she's all done, and now I'm gonna start adding purple for my little bear's scarf. You could do this kind of thing in whatever colors you wanted, and whatever matches your gift wrapping, if you're gonna put this on gift wrap, uh, whatever your favorite colors are, lots of different color schemes you, schemes you could use, but I thought a purple and a blue seemed really fresh compared to what I normally use on my Christmas cards and Christmas tags and things, so I thought doing something a little different would work. And when I get to the backgrounds, you're gonna see I totally went outside of the norm of color because these these tags were actually, I think, one of my favorites throughout the series. Well, no, no, that one was the fit. No, that one was the fit. No, well, okay. It's one of my favorites in the series this year. It's kind of hard to decide when they're all your babies and you love them all. So off to sharpen the pencil again. I sharpen often as I color. It's just something that I've gotten in the habit of doing and it makes the technique work so much better if you keep it very sharp. If you're trying to get the pencil into one little teeny tiny area, you can always hold it very vertically. But since I keep mine really sharp, I can hold it at a little bit of an angle and be more relaxed in my coloring. It's just harder to hold the pencil when you're trying to hold it really super vertically. I decided the package would also be the purple and the blue. So add a little bit of that and then take the same shading color that I used on the little girl's dress for the shading on the package. And then a darker purple to start adding some depth onto the scarf. All the colors that I use, the specific Prismacolor color names will be listed in the blog post. So if you're interested in that, um, I just didn't get them <laughs> put into the video. The process for doing that and putting colors in is a little on the elaborate side and ran out of time on that one. So they will be listed, however, in the blog post for you. I'm adding some shading and you can add just along the bottom, but I decided to add almost a different stripe of color. So it looks like there's a fold in his little scarf, which adds a little bit more interest to it as well. You could also do all kinds of different designs on her dress, on the scarf, lots of different ways you could decorate it up and personalize it as well. So now I have her colored and the scarf colored and everything on all the others. And I'm just going to add some different coloring to the bear. You know, bears in cold climates could be any different kind of bear. I mean, polar bears, black bears, this one's going to be a black bear. They could be grizzly bears, brown bears. All different kinds of bears and there's like the the funnest one is the last one I'll save that I won't give it away because it's darling and cute and I'm just gonna add the same shading the shading is in the same place you'll notice as I did on the polar bear so all that light gray shading is where I'm putting my dark pencil basically the the gray pencil covered the entire bear and now I'm just going in basically with another layer that looks like the same shading from the first bear. And I'm gonna just keep the same lighting. I don't have to think about that anymore. And here again, we have the brown bear. 
the lighter brown is covering the whole bear. And here I have that one spot that was too dark, so I just flipped that off with the knife. And then I'm adding all my shading with the darker brown pencil. You could make bears all different kinds of colors. I mean, all kinds of crazy colors. You could make pink bears and blue bears and green bears and brown bears and all sorts of kinds of bears. And just use the same kind of shading. Easy peasy to do. Now this bear I colored like the, the polar bear. I colored another one like him and then I'm gonna add polka dots. Oh my gosh, this is like a little polka boca bear. <laughs> I think he's so cute. And you could do this with any animal as well. Wouldn't that be fun with a lot of your different animal stamps to just make them look like they're giant cuddly polka dot bears and polka dot foxes and polka dot whatevers, whatever kind of animals you have. I can add more shading to some of those spots that have the gray shading with my pencils and just make them look really cute. All right, next step is to do the backgrounds and I'm going to mask off my bears so I could do some distressing backgrounds. And the tape that I have, this is a masking tape and it's made by Post-It, so it's basically Post-It weight and Post-It stickiness. So it's very lightweight and easy to work with. But I have to use two pieces of it a little bit. There are different kinds, I think, that have full sheets, but with just that little extra bit of the, the scarf, it's super easy to just mask that out and add it on. Just do it in two little pieces and then fussy cut it all out so that I can put it over each one. One of these masks will last for maybe these four. I mean, once I got to the fourth one, the masking tape was pretty much toast. Once you put a lot of ink on it, it just is going to start getting weird and it's going to lose its sticky as well. So I'm just putting it down on top of the already colored image. You could also do your image um, last and get your backgrounds right first if you're worried about your backgrounds or do the coloring if you're more worried about the coloring. There's different theories depending on what you do well. And I'm just going to use these four colors to put a bunch of different inks on here. So picked raspberry, mustard seed, peacock feathers, and then a little bit of blueprint sketch. And you can do them in stripes like this. So I'm making something that looks a little bit like the Aurora Borealis. Or you can go in here with the round tool and make polka dots. Oh my gosh, polka dots and polka bear. It just made me happy. This was an accident because I was planning on making all Aurora Borealises. And when I saw, like, I made a goober with my pencils or with my, my little tool, I went, oh, that looks cute. So I'm repairing a little, a few little areas where my mask covered with some colored pencil and then going in with a white pencil to create some glow around some stars on the Aurora Borealises. I don't know how you pluralize that word and then putting a star in the middle of them and then you can add extra stars as well with a white gel pen of some sort so lots of fun look how playful those are I just love that little polka dot polka bear oh my gosh I think I'm gonna be making more of him because he's so cute all right I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got something out of it if you did please click the like button down below and you are most welcome to click up on the, the top section where the playlist for this year's 2015 series videos are being uploaded. And in the bottom is last year's. You can check out either one. And you can also click on the links in the description for my blog and for more information on the products used in this video. Be sure to subscribe because I wouldn't want you to miss out on tomorrow's video because it's the last day of the tag videos. I'll see you then. Bye bye.